Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So today we finally have on our hands the long-awaited, well actually not really long-awaited, for me it was just kind of a surprise. I didn't even know it just came out. Um, uh, or at least it was sent in my email that this thing just came out and so I decided to, um, to get one. And of course I'm talking about the VFC XM177. Now it's funny because even though I thought this was something that just came out, uh, I just looked on YouTube, apparently someone had made a video of this same model, uh, Airsoft model, about uh, a year ago. So I guess it existed long before I knew about it, so maybe I'm just a little late for the game. But anyway, uh, I kind of want to take an opportunity to talk about it today because for uh, the longest time, I've had a, as you all know, for those of you who follow the channel at least, uh, the WE XM177 right here. Now, originally this, of course, was an E2 model. Um, now, this is now actually a uh, considered an, uh, an E1 model now because the the uh, the flash hider is basically attached, and this is a 10 in, or sorry a 10 inch barrel, roughly speaking, uh, compared to the original, which is supposed to be an 11 and a half inch barrel, like the one right here. Uh, that's what really what distinguishes. There are other features too. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but um, for the most part, um, you know, they never. Uh, for the longest time, if you really wanted an XM177, this was your only W was your only option. And I know some people have um, differing opinions about the uh, WE series XM177. Um, but uh, today we're going to kind of talk about a little, maybe a little side. I'm going to focus mainly on the VFC model here. But um, every now and then I'm going to bring in the um, the WE model here. Now let's take a moment to thank our sponsor today, you guys. Um, I really appreciate everyone watching this content here. We generally film out here in the countryside, nice and cheap. Um, but uh, I've noticed that I've been trying to get some sponsors and the airsoft products vendors and all those people or suppliers, they kind of adopted the Sriracha model here where uh, you know you instantly see this product right here and you recognize it, but you probably can never remember a single time when you've seen a commercial for it. So they uh, have never really given me a sponsorship or anything like that for this channel. Uh, I do this just as a hobby, so that's not a big deal. Um, but uh, I like to try to um, expand a little bit more and we'll cover uh, other topics that are a little bit unrelated. The core content of this channel will always be about Airsoft, of course. Um, but every now and then I'll have a little plug for one of my other videos. Um, in this case, products that are really relevant that I've used. So some of you guys might know that I um, have a second channel, uh, the same content, also Airsoft, but it's uh, based in France. And uh, as you can see here, uh, we have really moved out um, and try to expand into the European market here. Um, and so uh, through this process, this channel, A, if you like this product or like more, want to see more Airsoft product, uh, we have a channel here in France. Uh, it's, the content is very much different between the English channel and the French channel. Um, obviously, it's still Airsoft related. Um, but uh, I would definitely recommend that if anyone's interested. And of course, to help uh, increase uh, viewership, I've kind of do a, I'm doing a shameless plug about uh, some per certain product reviews. So in this case, we're going to talk about language learning here. I made an entire video about uh, how much you can learn in a year uh, if you're trying to, uh, if you're interested in that kind of stuff. So I know no one's probably really interested in here, but I just want to do something to help increase funding uh so i'll leave a link below i really appreciate everyone watch that at least click on it just to help us out here um thanks a lot guys back to the content all right so of course uh uh this is finally a model that um uh, i am a huge fan of and uh it's a classic it's a classic uh model uh, that, you know, uh, that really lives up to its name. And I think really what makes it so iconic, of course, is the, the flash hider, right? Um, you take this off and you put on a standard bird cage and people are going to think it's like an M733 because I think the, the barrel length actually is the same, uh, actually. So M733, XM177. But this model obviously is different. Of course, it costs more than the WE, but, uh, this one is finally has license trading and everything like that by, uh, I think it was Cybergun who works with Colt. Now, I mean, Cybergun's not the only company that has like licensing with Colt. There's like, uh, I think Tokyo Marui, uh, GHK, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, occasionally, I've seen a few WE models that have the, um, the licensings on them, but I don't know, when I go to the store, I see a couple of them, but they're very rare. And for the most part, they're, they're blank receivers when I see them. Uh, so this is a very nice touch. 
individualized serial numbers. Everyone's going to be different. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, and of course, the very retro look. Um, Color-wise, it's, it's always hard to capture this on camera though, but uh, this is kind of a, a slightly matted uh, no, sorry, it's a slightly grayish, I think it's called the XM Gray, I think this is where it came from actually, uh, the color XM Gray, so it's not quite black, uh, like the Tokyo Marui where it's like midnight black, if you can tell, uh, compared to say the Scope or something like that, the Marui or the VFC M733 has the same color as this right here, whereas this is a little bit different, which I like, um, I, I think this is the color that they got very accurate. Um, now, I do want to point out real quick though, the, the um, let's start back at the top, uh, the forward, or sorry, the flash hider, um, of course it's, it's standard. Uh, what's interesting is this is actually a two-piece model, which is more realistic to the original, um, because this part detaches to this part, whereas in the WE, it's one complete block. Uh, so, you know, not that it really matters or anything like that. Uh, both of them are actually pretty darn heavy. Uh, so, but uh, this one I think has more of a realistic touch to it, as I as expected for the price you pay for a VFC Colt model. Um, look how much thicker that is in the front right there on the flash hider. If you were to compare that, for example, however, with the um, WE, it's it's a little bit thinner. Uh, if you were to take a look at that, uh, so it's hard to get this an angle here, but uh, as you can see, it's a little bit thinner. Um, and of course this entire chunk is not separated, you take it off, it comes as one chunk. Both are very heavy and made of, I think, uh, steel, uh, so they're very heavy. Um, and they're both uh, 14 millimeter negative clockwise, I believe, I can double check that in a second, but uh, very cool of that. So personally, I prefer just like, because of the thickness of the front profile view, I prefer the, uh, the VFC one, but both are awesome. However, if you ever watched my video on my review of the XM177 by WE after about 10,000 rounds or something, you would know that one of the biggest reasons why the uh, this XM uh, M or seven or XM177 E2 is now an E1 model is because this flash hider, as iconic as it is and as quality of material as it can be. Uh, is very heavy and as I mentioned it does cause a lot of stress um, on that that part right there and it could eventually break. Uh, check out that video by the way if you want to. Um, there's a video down there that has a little bit more about it if you're interested by the way. Um, but uh, it, it, it caused a lot of stress and the, the barrel part itself is made of a different more of like a aluminum or zinc die cast. It's, uh, it's not steel like this one, so it's much weaker. Um, and so the same situation uh, you'll see on the W or the VFC here, uh, you'll notice that uh, uh, it's again steel, but you know, um, a zinc alloy or something like that, it's a mixed composite here. Uh, so I'm a little worried that over time, I mean, we'll find out over time, right? If this heavier uh, front uh, will cause this put too much stress here and cause this to break. And unfortunately, because the WE model, that's actually just an extension piece. So you can actually unscrew it and just take this and move it back here and it's basically not a problem. This one is basically, it's a single piece barrel, a pencil thin barrel, which is very realistic. However, uh, if this were to break, you're tough out of luck. You gotta get a new barrel to replace it. Uh, so, but I don't know, that's, I'm just speculating what would happen in the future. I've only had this for about a mm, couple days and I've only put through about like maybe two, 300 shots through it. So, uh, it's not gonna, it's, it took like almost 10,000 rounds for the WE before it kind of started cracking. Uh, so in any case, uh, um, you know, just something to point out because I'm, I guess I'm a, an expert quote unquote, I'm kidding, I'm not. Um, but that's just from my experience. Um, and then. Interestingly enough, the marking here, the CMP, let me turn it around so you can see it better. Uh, the marking on the, the on the barrel here for like the quality marking that's found on the real Colt, uh, is located on the bottom, which is a little bit strange because I thought that was supposed to be found on the, um, the top. Not a big deal, but uh, you're not gonna be able to switch it obviously because the stakes for the front sight post is at the bottom, so it's stuck at the bottom. Uh, so I'm not sure if that was a mistake or not. Either way, I don't really care. It's not a big deal. Um, or maybe sometimes 
the company does it both ways. Well, they'll have it sometimes on the top and sometimes on the bottom. Not sure. Uh, standard uh, foregrip or handguard, sorry, handguards right here, plastic. Uh, I've never been a huge, um, you know, I don't think these are as good of a quality on this as compared to say the um, the real steel, obviously, who are, which are also plastic. But this is maybe also um, excusable because the technology back then wasn't maybe as good and this is the best quality of plastic and that's the same texture that WE or VFC is trying to replicate. If you were to compare that uh, to the WE here, uh, you'll notice that uh, it's a little bit duller. Um, so I don't know which is more realistic. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, either case, um, you know, uh, they're just standard hand guards. They both have interior um, heat shields, single layer heat shields on the inside, which is standard. Uh, this is where you start getting the difference here. Uh, and I think this actually makes it more realistic because uh, the WE was supposed to come as an XM177E2 model, and it comes with a, a slip ring right here that is flat. Uh, now, of course, the W the e, XM, e, XM177 E2 model is supposed to have a tapered delta -ish slip ring right here. And of course, the reason being is to, in order to access the handguard for maintenance purpose, you need to pull back on the delta or the slip ring. A flat surface is much harder to, to get good, a good grip on and pull. That's why they change it to more of a taper. You're still gonna need tools to you to change it because this is much easier with a, an assist tool. Uh, here's a video below if you wanna see more about the assist tool. But in any case, uh, this, this is supposed to be, this is, um, if this was really an E2 model with the longer barrel, this should have been a taper thing. But actually this came as a flat one. So now actually it's even more appropriate that it's the uh, E1 model here. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, think, I'm pretty sure that's how it comes as. Um, so then uh, next up, we'll move down further down to the uh, the receptor here, or the the receiver here. Um, oh, by the way, of course, I, I need to talk about this since we're going on the receiver here. The Brownell scope, I got this specifically, this retro. So this is actually the same Brownell scope that the company and the original in the 1960s made. Uh, it's made in Japan. Uh, it's so awesome how that same company still exists today and they still make the same thing. Um, but that scope obviously is not included in this model here. And uh, it's kind of cool to finally have a model that fits on this because when I bought the scope a two year, a year or two years ago, I think it was, I intended for the uh, uh, to be placed on the WE model. However, for some reason, uh, the the top doesn't fit, um, and so I have to use kind of like this a or not a cog, this like red dot, and so that looks kind of tubular to put it on there. But um, you know not really quite it just doesn't fit and that was the whole point of having the the scope is i think that was what the scope was designed for uh so i'm finally very happy to finally have a um a scope that uh that fits uh fits it very well here uh so it's awesome a little bit heavy overall but it does add a little bit more weight to it because this 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 model is actually kind of light to start off with anyway so it's nice to have this on there uh um, anyway, but uh, with this advantage, of course, you still have access to the uh, the bottom or the, the rear iron sets if you need to for some reason. Uh, it's not as easy, it's still kind of shrouded in darkness because of the scope on top, but you can still access it and it's not a big deal um, for those kind of closer engagements, I guess, if you're going to use this. Uh, uh, yeah, a recept receiver, I keep saying receptor, sorry, receiver. Awesome, awesome. Now this paint job isn't probably a Cerakote, it's just your standard paint job. Uh, I've actually had to, um, I actually already scratched by mistake uh, when I was trying to fix something here, but uh, it looks like it's, you know, not bad if um, it comes with this little stamp here. Apparently this stamp is supposed to signify that it's been approved for the, the quality inspection from the US government um, model, so it's pretty awesome. Um, interestingly enough, uh, a lot of the models have adjustable rear sights. I mean, that's how they came in, with actually. But uh, this model here, actually, for once the when it's count or it's in the center position right here in the rear sight, I'm actually hitting center. All my other models, I have to max out the windage to the left or to the right because the way the barrel is attached. And don't get me wrong, that's just 
how the barrels are assembled, and that's the purpose of having an adjustable rear sight, at least on this model here, the, um, the A1 style model. Uh, but uh, sometimes on some models, even though I've maxed out the windage, uh, I still can't hit where I'm, I'm aiming at because it's just uh, it's just the, the barrel was installed, at least from the factory, or maybe in some cases if through my modifications, uh, it, it just isn't good or it's not ac or, um, set correctly, basically. So it's nice to have something that's actually set in the middle and actually hits where you think it hits. But it doesn't really matter in this case because of course I'm using the, the round nose scope and that's totally adjustable, uh, so that's not a big deal. Um, uh, standard stuff, by the way, if you're looking for uh, the bolt uh, stop, uh, it's the same stuff uh, as the, you'll notice that it has the HK416 version 3 on it. They use the same one, whether it's the VFC XM, or sorry, VFC M733, or this one, they use the same thing. I've, to be perfectly honest, I've um, kind of found that this seems, again, I say seems because I haven't had a problem with it, but it always seems to be an issue in terms of how it flimsy it seems to kind of operate. Uh, but it's never been an issue, I just, for some reason, find it so it's not quite completely in line um, with like the chamber and everything like that. So for example, when I pull it back and gently uh, let it go forward, it doesn't seem to want to fall into place. They kind of have to, to kind of let it go uh, to, before it kind of uh, goes into the, the, the chamber. Um, not a big issue, but just something to point out. And when you pull out the, um, uh, the the bolt, if you try to like separate and push pull on the little head, the plastic head there, you'll notice that it doesn't retract like completely smoothly compared to like say the Maru or anything like that, um, or like the Viper Tech models. But but again, it's not a huge deal. I did oil this, uh, re-oil and everything, like the, or grease it up and everything like that. But uh, no, again, not a big deal. It's just. It just seems like a bit of design stuff, an issue, which is interesting because that brings me to my next point. Um, you know, I know, I know uh, this button here, the forward assist, is a very controversial thing, and all like the serious guys, at least on the, the real world, the real steel version, they they always like um, spit or like they spurn or they stick their nose up at this because they say, oh, this is, should never have been included with a mistake, or whatever, um, because the idea, of course, is that if you have a blockage inside the chamber. You shouldn't be you know, jamming uh, this forward assist to close the bolt. Um, but, you know, I think that's just, you know, um, it's funny because I've seen those same guys when they do these um, these mud tests or whatever, they, they pour in mud and uh, they can't close the bolt because there's a bunch of mud. And I see them, these same guys who say that don't use the forward assist, they actually kind of like <laughs> wish they had a forward assist in some models. And in some cases, when they were actually using the AR-15 series, they actually used the forward assist. Um, so it's just kind of interesting to um, to see. But in any case, in the airsoft world, of course, it doesn't matter as much. Um, there are some instances where you can use it, and it's actually helpful. For example, when you're uh, basically when you're low on gas and you hit the uh, the trigger, and uh, if the the bolt wasn't enough to fully cycle and it's still spewing out gas, you can kind of hit the forward assist to close the bolt immediately to avoid further gas spilling out right there. Um, not that really, you know, it just fixed it by a couple seconds. So it's, again, it's not really significant, um, but hey, it's kind of something that shows that it works um, and it's kind of useful. Um, now, um, what's interesting though, oh, and of course, uh, in this particular model, right, because we know we have this issue here where um, uh, this doesn't close all the time. Sometimes you do need to use the forward assist uh, to close it. Now, what's interesting is you have to be careful because as I'm pressing on this bolt catch or this bolt um, forward assist right here, it's not coming in because this thing is really misaligned. So you really have to be careful how or when you uh, uh, act when when you uh, uh, you pull on it. Uh, it does work. Um, there we go. And. But to be clear, this, the original version on the, the Viber Tech or the, the VFC here, doesn't work. It's a mock bolt. Um, I'll show you a picture in a second. Um, they don't have teeth on it. And I, for some reason, I don't know why, there's this trend where VFC doesn't make, uh, same thing with Angry Gun, they just don't come with functional bolts. They're all f faux or uh, fake mock bolts or, um, sorry, uh, forward assist here. 
I don't know why they don't just add on. They had the teeth for it. They and so this one happens to work because I actually changed it and I used a real um, a real steel bolt here by Panther Arms. Uh, and so this one actually works. Um, interesting enough though, the material between the original one on the VFC and the real steel by Panther Arms are actually the same material. So that's actually pretty quality. Um, obviously one just lacks the teeth, so the one doesn't work through anything. But if there's ever a model which requires a, um, a uh, forward assist, it might be this one actually. Um, and it's funny because I've had this one for a really long time, but it never really worked on any of the model. It wouldn't work on the WE without some serious modifications. Uh, and, uh, but uh, it's, I know I'm talking so much about this forward assist right now, but um, I just kind of wanted to, to elaborate a little bit more. Um, so sorry about that. But um, the WE here, this actually is the wrong button. It's supposed to be the teardrop one, not the M4 style one. But the original one by W actually did work. It had the teeth to engage on the uh, bolt uh, if there was an issue, but uh, that actually for some reason broke after like 5,000 rounds or something, I can't remember. And so I try to use the Panther Arms one right here, the DPMS one, which is a real steel one, and it didn't work on this. Uh, it was, I mean, it worked at some point, I had to, but it just looked really sloppy, and so in the end I had to choose like a fake one. Uh, so it wasn't really, it sat in my closet for a while. But originally this worked, but it did break. So points for WE, but not so much in quality, so I don't know. Um, the VFC looks like it was great quality, but it never really came with a functional one. So, but you can easily get a quote unquote function, oh, put in a different one for a pretty reasonable price. Very easy switch. Okay, sorry, uh, I know I keep going on about that. Uh, of course, um, oh, one last thing. Just like the real steel, um, back in the early 90s or, or 60s, the Dust cover here didn't include the flap. I mean, it included the flap that would help hold this part right here to put, keep the bolt closed, but it didn't include an extra little extra material here. So when you open it uh, and you have the uh, the receiver, uh, when you have the receiver uh, split open in half and you try to close it, because it's missing this little extra material here, you could actually be, uh, hit the edge of this uh, ejection port cover on this little part here, and that's why there's actually already damage uh, on there. And so just like the real steel, um, that's why there was a problem. And um, the WE model actually didn't get that correct because the WE model has kind of like the extra material, kind of a ramp sort of, and that's kind of supposed to serve as like, I think the word is the cam or something like that, where it prevents it from, uh, it keeps it kind of canted a little bit so it doesn't catch onto this part and doesn't dent your flap here. Uh, and but originally that was the same problem that happened in the the sixties when this model came out. And so that was why later on the models included more more material here to prevent that from happening. Uh, so I'm glad that I'm having the same problems that they had about forty something years ago because uh, you know that shows it's realistic and that's part of the collector value right there. But just be careful when you're closing it, when you're opening it and splitting it to not uh, dent it. I've already done it a few times by mistake. I almost dented or bent this out of shape. So what I did say is I grabbed one of these moose things on the Marui, uh, because the Marui include a little moose thing on the side just to, when you ship it, uh, to prevent the, the dust cover from flapping around. So I just ripped it off and just stuck it on there. Um, it already had adhesives on it, so it kind of helps dampen a little bit. I know it's not really realistic now at this point because you're supposed to, this thing is supposed to go back further when it flaps open like this, but um, I just want to avoid having that issue. And I found a good use for the moose piece right here. But uh, very good realism on their part, just be careful about the function. All right, um, last but not least, I know this video's getting kind of long. Um, the stock, oh, before we get to the stock, yes, the receiver takes your standard uh, 20 round mag right here. Interestingly how they add this uh, bolt stop function. I don't know why they chose, it's red. It looks kind of cool, it looks, reminds me of the, the Glock model. I'm not sure why they chose plastic. Um, the Glock magazines, the, the Gen 5, they use like the orange followers. I'm not sure why they use plastic here, but basically activate the switch in red to engage the dry fire function, pull it back if you want the lock back on last round. Uh, very awesome engravings and stuff like that. Uh, you know, uh, of course, I can get about like three solid 20 rounds, so 60 rounds basically. Each of these are 20 rounds, right? So I get about three off um, with bolt lock back on semi-auto of this on a regular like a room temperature temp outside 
Uh, so pretty good. So three fills, or each fill can give you three reloads on these before you have to refill the gas again. Of course, since this is a Viper Tech, I mean, uh, VFC, you could use their uh, 30 rounders right here. So if you have these from your VFC M733 or from your uh, M4s or whatever, they will work. Um, keep in mind that the, the little logos at the bottom are different, which is awesome because they, they really um, took time to, uh, 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 to mark it differently. So back in the 60s, maybe more like this, and then going forward in the more present day, like in the 90s, it was more like this. Um, mine was a little dented for some reason on this one because I don't know why it's flapping. The flap is a little bit like that, but it should be more condensed, but whatever. It works. I'm not going to uh, ask them to uh, ship it or anything like that or refund me the, the cost. Um, I'm happy with this. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So back to the stock. Last point is the stock. Um, finally, we have a stock that's within a reasonable price or sorry, reasonable price range that comes with enough authentic aluminum stock. All the original WEs had a plastic stock. It replicated this very nicely, but the WE of course was in pl uh, was, uh, it was plastic or is plastic. This is a two position stock, actually two position. I know everyone's griping about that. Uh, so yes, it doesn't really matter if it's three or four positions, you can either choose in or out. But in this one, you have no choice but check to tick, uh, take two positions, which is exactly uh, what it was realistic and how it was supposed to be. Because it was supposed to be for shooting or for storage, basically, not for adjustable plate carriers or whatever. Um, so this is an awesome, awesome thing right here. And I, I, I love the attention to detail, which I'm not surprised because again, VFC does do a lot of good work and they really try to focus on the exterior or like the, the function of it, which is awesome. Um, the checkering on the back is a little bit less aggressive actually and it's actually kind of smooth um, compared to the modern day or like the more polymer ones because later on they became polymer and how you can tell of course is that notice how this part here is smooth right here uh, the WE is just like that uh, of course the only difference like I mentioned already is the WE is polymer and so uh, but uh, you can tell that's supposed to be the design of the, the XM177 stock. Later on, they were still polymer, but you can tell that there's these little hash marks, like these two hash marks to help, I guess, reinforce the, the stock. Uh, but there's two use hash marks. They're still polymer, but they have those, and they look pretty much the same. Uh, texturing on this one is actually a little bit more aggressive, by the way, than on this one. But this, again, of course, is like four position or something like that. What am I do? Uh, I guess. Uh, five, five positions, sorry. Uh, so some people don't like that. The other thing is, by the way, the videos, people don't like the fact that this has a little bayonet lug here. Uh, this one does not include the bayonet lug, which is something people, collectors for the most part, are gonna love. I mean, the trade itself is already being licensed, and you are paying more to get these, but um, I think it comes with good detail quality that it's, it's good. You could get it on the WE. I had to paint this one myself, so obviously it looks like garbage but um there's a video i made about how to paint it if you have a friend who has this model and they don't mind you you know kind of borrowing their artwork or whatever and just taping it on you can and you know if you don't mind painting this again this, this actually was painted because originally this came as like a a very very dark black even darker uh than this this is more this is more like xm gray right here whereas this was like black. Uh, and so I don't think the color was as accurate in the original form. I did paint this and I guess I messed up with the paint color because it's just a little bit too light. Um, but in any case, um, great stuff. Uh, FPS wise, you see the box right here. Um, the same recoil, I think it's very well, I, I honestly think the recoil of both of these are very, very strong. Um, and they're, they're very, um, uh, very good. Um, you saw some videos where this was actually done now. I fired this in the winter time as a stress test and it's, it's pretty good. Um, obviously it's not meant for that, but um, you know, it's, it's some really good stuff there. Um, and so with the scope, of course, the scope is heavier. And so when you're using the scope, it's going to weigh down and you're gonna feel less of the recoil because it's, there's an extra mass there, at least uh, from what I perceive, I suppose. Um, but um, without it, it's much lighter and you can feel more of it. Um, but also, I want to say the WE is also pretty good in terms of the, the recoil as well. So both of them, you can't go wrong, I don't think. Um, and we'll just have to see because obviously the W, I've had 10 now, like 12, maybe 13,000 rounds in it. 
Um, and I'm about to retire that system basically it's so dang old and I want a new system and instead of buying the exact same thing I want to get something that's more like updated I guess so this is why we have this one here and one that actually can fit the scope um, more realistic has better looking trades with its license by Cole or sorry Cybergun no I'm sorry I said it wrong you know what I mean um, and so very very uh, a very good color scheme here so I just want to see if um, time will tell whether this thing will last as well as as long as the WE did. Don't get me wrong, the WE had plenty of um, had changes, and that's expected, right? But at least the parts were available, and as long as you know what parts to change, you can you can um, you can make that last for quite a long time. Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention before I forget. Uh, please make sure you clean the barrel internally when you get first get it. It is kind of a little bit dirty uh, when you first get it, as you can see in this picture here. And the inner barrel actually only extends to about here. So it's really more of like a 10 and a half, no, maybe 11, sorry, an 11 inch barrel, uh, rather uh, internally speaking. Um, and so I think the WE was, the barrel extended all the way till the end here. So there is a difference in terms of internal barrel, but some people don't like that because some people want the, um, the option. But I think personally, um, I would want the option to be able to keep the long barrel and change the size if I want, um, Watch my video about how to uh, cut down the barrel if you want. If you want to see how to convert it to an M733, but some people want that extra FPS and everything like that, so it's important to keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, uh, and by the way, there are no baffles uh, inside the, the 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 muzzle right here or the the flash kiter, so it's not like a suppressor. It just doesn't do anything. Um, it's for being the real as realistic externally it is. There aren't any internal baffles, so it's a straight up solid cylinder. Um, but pretty cool, I think. Um, and I think that's all I have for today. Um, oh, I forgot to mention it's the standard uh, A1 style uh, front sight post where it's like rounded instead of square. Uh, so there we have it. Um, I think that's it. So uh, next time we'll do some more shooting tests and stuff like that, and uh, we'll uh, have more videos to come just to, to review to follow. Hope you all enjoy this content. Uh, I was very surprised when this came out and um, I'm just glad I'm able to um, uh, to have something like this to review for everyone. I hope everyone enjoys this. Uh, I know uh, the more I videos I make on these XM models, the more, or more of these retros models actually, the more I realize that there's a huge market and people actually like the retro um, series. So, um, you know, uh, so I'm glad I'm not the only one who thinks that the retro stuff are really awesome. Uh, and I rather prefer the retro stuff compared to the, the more modern uh, stuff. It's more of a collector. But in any case, I uh, hope you all enjoy and uh, see you guys next time.